What's up everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Duncan Dimanche. Today I want to talk about Nikon and Canon and why you should go with Nikon. I'm not going to talk about what I like about Canon, what I like about Nikon and all that. There's, you know, everyone has their own opinion on that. But there's one thing that Canon lacks and that's dynamic range. So to put it quickly, dynamic range is the measurement between a maximum value and a minimum value. So in photography, it's everything in between the blackest blacks and the whitest whites. So you want your camera to store as much information as it can. So the human eye can record more than 24 stops of dynamic range and a camera usually has 12 stops and some can go up to 15 as we're going to see in this video. But that's why sometimes when you take a photo of an amazing view, you look at the photo and you're like, okay, this just does not look good. That is why, because your eye has so much more information in the dark area and in the bright area. When you look at your photo, the white can be washed out and the black can be just crushed. There's no information in the black. So Canon have been using their own sensors for a while now and Nikon has been using Sony sensors and Toshiba. Even though Toshiba was bought by Sony, that is an amazing choice because the Sony sensors are just amazing. They have such a high dynamic range. I went into DxO.com to look at the dynamic range of the top 100 cameras and I found out that only three Canon DSLR made it in the top 100 cameras. Three. And it shows that Canon are having problems with dynamic range and their sensors. But the one thing that is impressive with Nikon and Sony sensors is that you can push the shadows so much and still store that information, still keep some details in the shadows area. And that is what Canon have been lacking for so many years. But anyway, let's look at the DxO results and let's look at the DP review also. And at the end, I wanna show you guys some samples to show you what the Nikon and what the Canon can do. And if you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about Canon's dynamic range and Sony sensors. So here are the top three Canon cameras. The 6D and the 7D Mark II barely have 12 stops of dynamic range. But the 5D Mark IV has 13.6 stops of dynamic range. And all the top three Nikons are at 14 stops or plus. The D810 almost goes up to 15 stops of dynamic range, which is very impressive. I'm not going to leave those images too long, so pause if you want to have a longer look. And here's the DP review. Um, here's how they work. They take a photo and they push the exposure um, to five stops just to see how much information are in the shadows and how much noise is being created by doing so. And uh, here are the cameras. The Canons are on the left and the Nikons on the right. And you see there's so much noise happening when you're pushing the shadows of the Canons. And even Nikon's 3400, it's a $500 camera, does a better job than the 6D Mark II. And um, it's pretty alarming, I would say. Look how much information you can get back from the Nikons. And here's a Mark III, 2012 and 2012, and it's pretty horrible. I gathered all the Canons here. And as you can see here, the Canon 80D from 2016 is the better camera here in that regard. Now the Nikons are really clean, except the D5. The D5 is the only Nikon that has been bad in dynamic range for the past five to six years. And all of them side by side. And after that, we're gonna look at some real life situation. So this was shot in Scotland. This is a shot of my good friend photographer that I shot in Scotland. And um, it was backlit, but look how much detail I was able to bring back. It was not an extreme shot, but look at the range, the dynamic range of this shot. It's very impressive. And there's no noise in the shadows. And here's another one. I was worried about the background being blown out, so I underexposed. And uh, it was very easy to raise the shadows and get a decent picture. Here's the before shot, and here's the after. Look, you can actually see the detail in the scarf. And here's an extreme shot of the Nikon. I underexposed, didn't mean to underexpose that much, but look how much I can bring back by just pushing the shadows and the brightness. It is 
crazy. Yes, it's very noisy, but it's holding those details very well. Look at that. And we're going to look at the side by side of the before and after so you can actually get a close look of how dark it was before and after. Try to do that with a Canon camera. And here's a photo of Morgan that I took with the 5D Mark III. I underexposed a bit too much, but uh, I thought it would be easy to bring back the shadows, which I did. But look at the pattern that Canon makes. It's very strange and um, it does not happen with the Sony. I took this shot with the Sony a6500, pretty much the same situation, raised the shadows and there is noise but you don't get that weird pattern that the Canon has. Let's look at them side by side. The right shot is out of focus, but it doesn't matter. Look at, look at that. It's just, it's just a very strange pattern. And I, if you're gonna be cropping a lot or wanting to print big, then those weird artifacts are gonna be seen and they're very hard to get rid of. another shot of the a6500 I'm going to raise the shadows just so you can see so it's noisy but you don't get that weird pattern it's very easily corrected with some noise reduction so I shot this wedding and I underexposed because of the curtain. I did not want a curtain to be blown out. I shot with both cameras, the 5D Mark III and the A6500, pretty much at the same time. And look at that. I want to raise the shadows on both the exact same way, the exact same amount. And uh, once again, you see that pattern on the 5D Mark III that you do not see in the A6500. And say what you want, you cannot get rid of that. So yes, it's a bit extreme, but sometimes you have to raise those shadows and uh, I like to have a clean image when I do so. And to be fair with Canon, I want to show you guys a normal situation. I shot this, underexposed it, um, I did not want the dress to be blown out. I did not want the dress to be overexposed. And I uh, raised the shadows a bit. I pushed it a bit for this purpose here. And um, here it's not too bad. Look at that. It handled pretty well. Um, got rid of the green that I added. So you just have to be aware that when you're shooting with a Canon camera, you cannot underexpose too much. In a way, I think Canon has spoiled the way that I shoot photos because I always underexpose now because I know that I'm going to be able to bring back those shadows so much in post um, that, yeah, I'm used to underexposing. All my photos are underexposed all the time because I'm just scared of, you know, getting those highlights, burning those highlights. And um, yeah, I guess it's just a new way of taking photos. All right, I think that's it for me. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something from it. And I hope that it's gonna make you think about what camera has a good dynamic range for your next purchase. And uh, with that, I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna say subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And let me know what camera you have. Let me know if you're happy with that dynamic range of that camera. And I'll see you guys in the next video.